Time now for Focus, and today we're going to take a closer look at the Rwanda genocide trial we've been reporting on. The trial of Octavia Ungenzi and Tito Barahira, two former mayors of a village in eastern Rwanda. They're being tried thanks to the investigative efforts of Alain and de Froza Gauthier. France 24's Julie Dongalov went to meet them. The 6th of April 1994, a missile shoots down a plane over Kigali triggering one of the worst genocides in human history. All passengers are killed, among them the Hutu Rwandan president, Juvenal Habia Rimana. The ruling Hutu extremists blame the Tutsi rebels from the Rwandan Patriotic Front. On the 7th of April, the mass killings begin. On the authorities' kill lists, names of Tutsis, but also of moderate Hutus who oppose the violence. The genocide spreads, led by Hutu militias and Rwandan army forces galvanized by the anti-Tutsi hate messages broadcast by the extremist Hutu radio. Men, women and children are killed with machetes, grenades and guns. On June the 22nd, the UN gives France the green light to launch a military operation, but the intervention doesn't halt the bloodshed. France is even accused of indirectly supporting the Hutu. July the 4th, the Tutsi's Rwandan Patriotic Front takes control of the capital, Kigali, marking the end of the genocide. In just 100 days, 800,000 to 1 million Tutsis have been massacred. As Tutsi rebel leader Paul Kagame assumes power, more than a million Hutus are forced to flee the country. Dafrosa Gautier is a Rwandan Tutsi and lost family members in the genocide. She and her husband, Alain, have devoted themselves to hunting down those Rwandans suspected of taking part in the killings and who sought refuge in France. When we were listening to the stories of the survivors and stories of our families, we thought, what can we do with all of it? So we started taking records of what we heard and figured we needed to do something about it. Ever since the genocide, our life took a whole new dimension. We got involved in the project seven days a week. At first, we focused on the cases that had already been opened in France. But eventually, we found out that there were other Rwandans who allegedly participated in the genocide, living right here in France. And every time we found one, we had to go to Rwanda to investigate. We needed testimonies to back up our accusations. The couple has already filed over 20 complaints against presumed killers. In 2014, their work made history when Pascal Simbi Kangwa, former captain of the Rwandan army, was sentenced to 25 years in prison for participating in the genocide. Further digging led the Gautiers to two more men living on French soil, Octavien Ngenzi and Tito Barahira. Both were former mayors of Caborondo, a small village in eastern Rwanda. In 1994, Octavien Ngenzi was the mayor, and Tito Bahaira had been named the MRND representative for the region. At the time, the MRND was Rwanda's one and only political party. They were the organizers of the killings. They were giving orders, sponsors in a way. In Rwanda, we call them first category. One of the charges concerns events that occurred on the 13th of April 1994, a week after the killing started. 1,200 Tutsis took refuge in a church. No one came out alive. In 1994, churches became proper killing grounds. A taboo had been broken. People no longer had any qualms in attacking a sacred site. People were rounded up inside churches. Then, depending on the place and method, they would make the church cave in on itself, 
or they would throw grenades inside. In our case here in Cabarando, the killers went inside the church. They asked the Hudus to leave and the Tutsis to remain inside the church. Now many witnesses have told us Ngenzi and Barahira were there at the time. They were the ones who gave out the orders to kill all the Tutsis. Events that are being contested by the accused. My client, Tito Baharia, denies taking part in these massacres, in these attacks, and all these things he's being accused of. And in particular, the massacre that was committed at the church in Cabarondo on April the 13th, 1994. He has already explained, and will have the opportunity to explain this again, that he arrived at the church after the massacre, and that he could only witness the monstrosity of what had just happened that the only thing he could do was try and provide assistance to those who were still there. The trial begins this Tuesday in France. Within the so-called universal jurisdiction framework, France has the right to try foreigners who've committed crimes abroad once they're on French soil. Now, for more on this, I'm joined in the studio by Clémence Bechtart, a lawyer and the coordinator of the International Federation for Human Rights Litigation Action Group. Hello. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Hello. Now, this is the second trial in France over Rwanda's genocide. How does it compare to the last, one that was held two years ago and which resulted in Pascal Simbikangwa being put behind bars for 25 years? Well, as you mentioned, it is the second trial that um, French uh, justice organizes on the Rwandan genocide, 22 years uh, after the genocide, which is quite late, and we deplore it. Um, but it is another um, important case, another uh, solid investigation that was led by French investigative judges who went with prosecutors, um, with uh, police officers in Rwanda many times. In this particular case, they had been in Rwanda 13 times to investigate. And they have been able, um, following this investigation, to, brought, to bring these two accused to trial. So we think it is, although it is late, a very positive sign uh, in terms of the fight against impunity. But would French prosecutors have done anything like this if it weren't for the couple we met in the report who've been fighting for years and years to see uh, suspects, uh, genocide suspects, brought to trial? Of course, um, Alain and Afrosa Gauthier have uh, led a very important role in bringing these cases to justice, but they have also been supported by uh, all kinds of rights groups in France, which have been very active in terms of advocacy and also by their involvement, their judicial involvement in the cases to push the French authorities to give the necessary means to the justice system in order to be able to organize such trials. What we have to recall, and it's important, is that the first complaints filed in France against suspected perpetrators of the genocide were filed back in 1995, so only one year after the end of the genocide. And although these complaints were very early um, and also very numerous in France, because a lot of suspects have found refuge in France after the genocide, well, we had to wait for 20 years for the first trial and now 22 years for the second trial to be organized. So, of course, they have played a, a very important role, but as uh, other groups we ha who have uh, called relentlessly uh, to the French authorities to comply to their obligations under in international law and to go ahead with these investigations. Can we expect many more such trials in the coming years? Because quite a few complaints have been filed. Quite a few complaints have been filed. There are approximately 30 cases that are still being under investigation uh, by the French justice. So, so yes, we do expect um, other cases to be brought to trial in, in the next years. Now, Alain and Defrosa Gauthier, they were, I understand, inspired by similar cases in Belgium. Uh, are there other countries uh, that are undertaking similar uh, uh, justice, uh, judicial proceedings? Yes, concerning Rwanda, but not only. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, other, in particular, European countries uh, who have uh, led investigations and brought to trial uh, accused of the, the Rwandan genocide, in particular, who had found refuge in other countries, European countries, in the Netherlands, uh, in Norway, in Sweden, uh, in Belgium, etc. And a lot of trials have already been organized and have led in the most uh, frequent cases to convictions of of the, the, the accused. Now, France has um, denied accusations that it didn't do enough to stop the genocide, but are there any, have there been any complaints directed at the state? Can we expect uh, the government to be in the dock? 
in relation to the genocide at any point? There is an ongoing investigation concerning the implication of the French army in the Rwandan genocide and the role it played. Um, this case is under investigation. It followed a complaint filed by the FIDH, um, by other uh, rights group, and the, the investigation is still going on. And we do hope that positive developments will also intervene because we think it is crucial that this question be dealt with, um, with all the seriousness that it requires by the French justice system. System. And how do you think this trial, the one that uh, got underway today on French soil, is being viewed back in Rwanda? Well, we think it's an important piece of all this puzzle of international justice that had to be put into place after the genocide. We know that a special court, uh, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, was appointed and, and uh, uh, was able to judge a high number of suspects in Arusha for years. Uh, also, uh, European uh, jurisdiction have also played, national jurisdiction have also played a role. So this is one other piece to this huge puzzle of the fight against impunity. Uh, trying to find um, as many perpetrators um, and bring them to justice. It's very important for the victims. There has been, uh, given the high number of victims, the extreme gravity of the crimes, it was important that the judiciary response uh, intervene in terms of this international tri tribunal, but also in terms of national co courts taking all of them, their share of responsibility in terms of contributing to the justice for the Rwandan genocide uh, victims. And so it's a matter of weeks or months before we get a verdict for this particular case? The trial will take place for eight weeks and the verdict will be, will be pronounced right away so we can expect a, a verdict in two months. All right, thank you very much indeed, uh, Clémence McTart, for coming in for today's Focus. Thank you for watching. I'll be back in a few minutes with a full news roundup.